Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Way That I See It. My name is Lisa Superfox, and this is my podcast. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about nervous system regulation, why you need to know what it is, why it's important, how it's maybe impacting you, your life, your health, your wealth, and your worth right now. So let's dive straight in. So you guys have heard me talk about the nervous system quite a lot over previous episodes. You've heard me share my story, my journey, my experience of doing a lot of healing work over the last um, two years. And how doing a big part of nervous system regulation and somatic, which means body work, alongside all of my cognitive work, so my emotional healing and processing has completely transformed my life experience, not only how I feel in myself on a day to day basis, but also actually how that's shown up in my outward life. So what I've attracted in terms of clients, how my businesses have shifted, um, my wealth opportunities that have happened for me. And I truly believe that is because I've changed my vibrational alignment. So because I've changed my vibrational alignment, I've changed what I'm available for. And I've changed my vibrational alignment through healing and dealing. And a big part of healing and dealing is regulating the nervous system. So let's talk about what that is. So to understand, you have a central nervous system, which goes from your kind of in your spine. So basically runs in your brain in your spinal cord all the way down. And there are lots of different parts of your nervous system. And this is not a biology lesson, but you know, for example, if you touch a hot oven, you go, oh, right. It's your nervous system, your peripheral nervous system, running nerves into your fingers and running it back up to the brain at a speed that you couldn't even comprehend to tell you it's hot and to withdraw your hand, right? We can even have parts of the nervous system that sense things, right? So that sense of sensing um, that someone's about to make you jump or something's around a corner, right? So you have that element to your nervous system. And that's what most people think it is. They think it's the adrenaline fueled, like it keeps you out of danger or it's what reacts. And they wouldn't be half, you know, half incorrect there. It's just, there's more to it. So the bits I'm going to talk about today are very much the parts that I have been focused on and that I teach a lot of my clients on and that I've integrated into a lot of my programs, including Thrive and the Becoming program. And that is around what I call your react and relax system. So your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system, which are really your states of being nervous system. So if on one side, you've got the sympathetic nervous system and this is your react system. So this is your put your foot on flat to the floor, you know, on the accelerator all the freaking way. Drive, 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 drive. You know, this is your hustler. This is your overachiever. This is your high performer. This is your stress head. This is your highly reactive, highly sensitive. This is your makes you jump, all your emotions, everything that's kind of like driven by anything other than a calm energy is probably coming from the sympathetic nervous system. Anything, the relaxed system or the parasympathetic nervous system is what we slip into when we sleep really well, when we relax, we're in a good environment, when our energy can calm down. And this is like putting your foot on the brake, right? So you put your foot on the brake and your body allows itself to recover. So this is in the state where your body can regulate hormones, where your body digests food, where your body relaxes and repairs and nourishes itself. So if you're always training and training and training and not taking any rest days and you're, you know, what happens is you become overstimulated, you become chronically in your sympathetic nervous system. There's no time to relax, recover, grow tissue, repair, all that jazz, right? So you've got the two different sides. So what often happens is through life, so whether it's through chronic stress, whether it is through um, trauma, whether it's through a one-off experience, whether it's through something really severe happening or whether it's really low grade. And this was mine. This was just, I had some traumatic things happen in my twenties that I never dealt with. And even though I thought I dealt with them, my body hadn't. So my head had, my body hadn't. Then on top of that, there was constant low grade stress that added up over time. And eventually I got stuck in my sympathetic nervous system. So always striving, always hustling, always driving. And from that place, what often happens is it's quite addictive, especially if you've got ADHD, it's kind of like a dopamine junkie place because you're always striving for the next thing, which why it doesn't feel safe to relax. You often have this underlying feeling of anxiety. And a lot of perimenopausal women find themselves here. And I think it's because as the hormones start to change, they just become more aware of how they're feeling, right? And so in this state, when we're stuck in this state, what can happen is we can reach the point where our sympathetic nervous system just doesn't have any more juice, right? And so from that place, that's when we often end up in what people term burnout or, and and I've been there and that's absolutely what it is. But burnout isn't this kind of thing where your body just stops working. It's where your body says to you, I've got nothing left to give, but it often shows up for a long time. There are warning signs for a long freaking time before burnout comes. So whether you're already in burnout right now or whether you've seen yourself, you know, you struggle to relax, you're not repairing well, your recovery suffering in the gym, you know, you're tired a lot of the time, you're always picking up illnesses. 
maybe you're not able to or maybe you're never sick that's also a really bad sign um and maybe you're somebody that is really emotionally sensitive the likelihood is that you are stuck in your sympathetic nervous system you're stuck in survival mode you're stuck in striving you're stuck in the the drive right and there's hustle culture will feed this toxicity it will tell you that you have to work harder that you just have to do more that there has to be more to give right and guys if that was true doctors teachers and you know nurses would be paid the most in the world if the if the harder you work the more successful you were if that was actually the truth those people would be the highest paid people in the world fact right it's nothing to do with that. Your worth, your wealth, your health, your abundance is all to do with your vibrational alignment and the inspired action you take from it. So what you can imagine, I want you to imagine this, is if you're stuck in your sympathetic, so your survivor mode, you're stuck in striving, you're stuck in hustling, you're stuck in, because it doesn't feel safe to stop, because that was me, right? If it doesn't feel safe to be that person, you are in high state of dysregulated nervous system. You are in a really stressed state. And can you imagine if your nervous system, if you think about just wires in a circuit, if they were all dysregulated and crazy, do you think that gives off a powerful aligned frequency? Do you think that gives off an energy that's really clear and coherent and gives off a clear vibration? Absolutely fucking not, right? So the reason why we must regulate our nervous systems is for our health. So when we've got chronic things going on, so when someone says to me, I've got fibromyalgia, I've got CFS, so chronic fatigue syndrome, um, you know, long COVID, you can also put into this, although I have some thoughts about spike proteins there, but about those two things. So especially ME, fibromyalgia and CFS, I was diagnosed with all those three things 10 years ago. They are not a part of my life today. They were part of my life because my body was stuck in a trauma response from things that had happened to me in previous years. And A, there's a part of your body actually having time to recover. But when you're then constantly in sympathetic nervous system, driver mode, striver mode, constantly going, what's then happening is you're actually not giving your body and your mind where relevant the time to heal from the experiences you've been through. And this is where people say things like, I'm just throwing myself into work or I'm just going to get to the next level. And when I get there, you know, whether it's wealth or body or business or whatever, when I do the next show or when I've made the next 10K or whatever, then I'm going to rest. Then I'm going to stop. And I promise you won't because you're telling yourself an inner story to keep you going because there's something about stopping that doesn't feel safe. And the likelihood is it's because when you stop and if you stop, you're going to have to look at shit you don't want to look at. So you have created these protection mechanisms, this over, this workaholism, this constant achievement, this reaching for stuff on the outside. You have created that to protect you from whatever experience was traumatic. And trauma, guys, as I've said to you before, trauma is not a list of specific events. It's how we felt within an event. It's the experience we had. And if you were in a chronic nervous system state, when you experienced the trauma, it was probably even worse right because we all know that when you've had a really good day and you're feeling really relaxed and someone pulls out in front of you you're like Ugh, what a bell end and that's it when you're really stressed you've had a bad day someone pulls out in front of you you're effing and blinding and waving your two fingers right so that's a really simple example of how we react versus respond so when we're in our react system all the time that can lead to a lot of physiological symptoms so this looks like dysregulated gut health cfs fibromyalgia me because the nervous system isn't regulating, isn't nourishing, cells aren't regenerating, right? So this is why you're stuck here. And people often believe that those things are happening to them. And I'm like, those things are a symptom of something else. And I'm not a doctor and I'm not a therapist. So, you know, don't slate me for this. I'm just telling you my experience. And after reading many, many, many healing books and somatic books and psychology books and all books, right? And listening and working with professionals. I am telling you, I have seen hundreds of people. There are hundreds and thousands of case studies of people that have healed themselves from things far worse than CFS, ME and fibromyalgia. And they have done that through regulating the nervous system, healing their trauma and actually stepping into the new version of themselves, right? So that's the first step is you've got to recognize where you are. Moving into the relaxed system isn't having a spa bath. It isn't having a movie night. It isn't off to a retreat for a week. Like, guys, that's not how we regulate our nervous system. It takes way longer than you think. And I want to be that person that's like, yeah, you can do it in three months, but you can't, right? Now, the depth of your severity of your nervous system dysregulation will dictate how long it takes you to move into regulation. So just like weight loss, if you've been a certain size or a certain weight for like 20 years, and then you want to lose the weight in 12 weeks, it probably isn't going to happen. It's the same thing with the nervous system regulation because it's all wiring. It's all reprogramming. So you have to program, your body is programmed to respond a certain way. Your mind is programmed to do the things it does in the order it does them. And so until you're able to create enough space and enough safety in your nervous system through healing, through dealing, through growth, through supporting yourself, then you won't stop and you won't change. 
So often, this is why people do end up in burnout before they're able to move into the relax and the react and actually give themselves the space and time to heal because of the fact they've actually just burnt themselves out to a core and the body can't go anymore. And this is what happened to me. And it's actually happened twice, which is horrifying that in my 36 years, it's actually happened twice. And it took the second time I learned my fucking lesson. And so moving into this healing stage, this relax isn't right. That's it. Quit my job. Don't do anything. Got to stop everything. Like that's just not practical. If you're in a position where you can take some time off work, you know, all the things that cause you stress, you can reduce your exercise intensity. And again, exercise is a big port, important part of healing, but there's an element there around intensity. Absolutely create space for yourself if you can do that. But you also have to be supported. So financially, you need to have money coming in. Emotionally, you need to feel like you're secure in your house because we have to create foundational safety in what I call the human needs. So we have to create human need safety. So we have to have an element of shelter. We have to be protection. We have to have food in the fridge. We have to have the val- you know, human needs and values protected in order for us to have the emotional and energetic space to do the healing work or whatever modality that looks like. So it looks different for every person. But the kind of the key things that I often see that need to be addressed, number one, gut health. Your gut microbiome is massively connected to your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health, your skin health. Basically, the way that you look and the way that you feel, I would say, is 70% connected to your gut health. So if you haven't done a gut health um, stool test or, you know, a test of actually what's happening in your gut, then I would strongly recommend you can reach out to me and I can recommend you some practitioners. I'm not a um, practitioner. I don't look at people's poo and say, oh, look at the bacteria. I can look at the test results and go, wow, that's fascinating. Myself and my husband do them a lot. Keep on top of it. Once you've had cyber and leaky gut, my friends, you always keep on top of it. So first of all, an assessment of what's happening in your gut, whether that's through testing or symptomology. And I'm going to be honest here, most traditional doctors do not have the gut health knowledge because they are a general practitioner. So I'm not saying go to the doctor as your first point of call. I'm asking you to look at some of the symptoms, like, are you bloated a lot? Are you feeling, are you experiencing lots of stress? How's your skin? Are you itchy? Do you have eczema? Do you have psoriasis? Do you have things that are basically what I call autoimmune type skin responses? Are you experiencing lethargy? Are you struggle digesting food? Like just start to bring awareness to your gut health symptoms. So the first foundational thing for me that's really important when doing nervous system work is gut health. The second thing that's really important, like I said, you know, first of all, we've got that foundational safety is the second thing is giving yourself real time to rest. And what uh, what a lot of this looks like, especially for women, especially if you're in your perimenopausal years, is naps, is getting as much sleep as you can. Like there was a stage where for, for guys for three months, I slept for 16 hours a day like wild, but my body needed it. It needed, it needed rest. It needed to nourish itself. So your sleep is really important. And I think if even just starting on gut health and sleep will make a foundational difference. Then you've got to consider the quality of your nutrition, which is obviously connected to gut health. So nutritious foods, lots of variety, lots of polyphenols, lots of colors, you know, and then you want to make sure your hydration is on point. So often people are actually dehydrated, drinking way too much water with no minerals. So some pink Himalayan salt, again, check the sourcing of your salt or some rehydrations can be really important. And then nature and sunlight. So they, the reason why that's two things that are really important is sunlight is really good, obviously, for vitamin D production. And obviously, it has a massive impact on gut health and hormones and neurotransmitters and mood. But also the importance of being in nature is grounding. It allows us to connect back, allows us to move away from our technology addiction. It allows us to have a bit of perspective. It gives us that sense of space and room that we don't get from just sitting at home in our lounge, right? So they're what I call the big five. So you've got you've got those to consider. So nutrition, sleep, like I said, I said about exercise, nutrition, sleep, hydration, nature, obviously gut health comes in nutrition and exercise is the final one. Now, again, walking is the number one primary thing I'd recommend. So getting plenty of steps in, moving your body, but not putting it under massive chronic amounts of stress. Once you've created those foundational elements, this is where you can then start to look at the emotional healing and the somatic healing work. So somatic healing work looks like body work. So that looks like everything from, I've talked about this before, Reiki, acupuncture, acupressure, massage, myofascial release, breath work, sound baths, crystal healing, um, shakti mats, uh, cold water dipping, all the things, right? I mean, guys, the list of my things in my side, my becoming program for somatic healing is about a hundred things long, (laughs) right? So then there's body work and everyone chooses their own different things. And then there's the emotional healing and the mindset reprogramming that needs to be done because regulating, even if you get yourself to move into relax, you've got to remember, you've got so much programming in react that you're going to have to have new experiences to recondition things. So you're not going to, if you take six months off work, you feel amazing. You go back to work and you're like, oh, triggered again. 
that's because you haven't actually reprogrammed that part of your nervous system. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is why it's not always a good idea to take loads of time off the things. It's just to give yourself the room and the space to be able to integrate this stuff into your life. And in fact, that is the fastest way I see people change is through integrating these practices and programs and doing the healing work alongside living their life because they're actually getting real life, real time practice of implementing the new behaviors, the new mindset, the new way of being rather than waiting to then do it again. Like people say, oh, I'll go on holiday for two weeks. Yeah, but you're going to come back and be re-triggered by the same environments, relive out the same programs and then recreate the same scenario all over again. So then comes the emotional healing and the mindset reprogramming. And this is really subject to what you've been through and your experiences is dependent on the right approach for you. For some people, when we know that actually, you know, there's deep, there's deeply stuff that was really traumatic, a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist might be the right route. For some people, a coach is the right route, someone to bounce off, someone to talk back and forth with, someone to, you know, be able to share some insight and This is why I really love being a coach is because I actually did a couple of discovery calls this weekend. I don't actually technically promote discovery calls. Like if you ever want one with me, you can ask for it. But I don't like go around saying, come on a discovery call because I'm just not that girl. Like I have a chat with you for 45 minutes. And if I think I can help you, I'll make some recommendations. And if I don't, I'll send you on to where I think can help you. And I actually did two this weekend. And it was really interesting because, well, one, the universe sent me two perfect people that I can absolutely help that are both absolutely incredible. But both of them said to me they'd done therapy before and they found that it wasn't the therapist that was necessarily the problem or therapy, sorry, it wasn't the therapy that was the problem. It was the fact they didn't gel with the therapist. And I was like, oh, I totally get that. I can totally resonate. And it kind of made them nervous to do any personal development. And I was like, well, I also get that, you know, like one negative experience of growth can lead to negative experiences of another. And they sort of said, so how does it work with you then? Do you just like sit and listen? And I was like, no, the best bit about being a coach is I get to have an opinion, (laughs) which is why I don't think I could train as a therapist, guys, because I would hate to not be able to have my opinion. And I always wait till I'm asked for my opinion or I'm able to share an insight of knowledge that leads to me sharing a relevant story that you're like, oh, okay, I can relate to that story, right? But I could never be someone who just sits and, and listens and then doesn't say anything. Like I haven't learned all the things and been through all the things not to share the things, right? So And then, but that's why I say it's all about finding the right fit for you. Like a coach is sometimes the right fit for somebody alongside the somatic work and the the healing work. And sometimes a therapist is required. Sometimes, um, uh, you know, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, sometimes medication is required. Like, and this is why it really is a team thing. Like central nervous system regulation and healing is not like a one and done. You don't just go, all right, I'm regulating my nervous system today and done. Guys, I fucking wish, right? But just like weight loss, it's about reprogramming. So just in weight loss, it's not like you just lose the weight and then you're done. You have to reprogram all your habits around food. You have to regulate your blood sugar. You have to improve your gut health. You have to change your habits. You have to change your patterns. You have to change your behaviors when you go out for dinner. Guys, like becoming from a fat person to a slim person is the same as dysregulated to regulated. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes repetition. It takes commitment. It takes, but but the difference is, that when you move into a state of regulated nervous system, you can do anything. You can achieve anything. Expansion is possible. A regulated nervous system has so much fucking space to hold for wealth, abundance, success, clients, life, right? You've got so much room, so much energetic capacity to live, to breathe, to experience, to have. You're not constantly worried and anxious and stressed, right? You're in this powerful and expanded kind of vibe. Being a slim person just means you're a slim person and you're confident when you wear like jeans, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. You'll often, I find a lot of people and me included, when I regulated my nervous system, lost the fuck ton of weight and I actually came off the rocks in. Just putting it out there. Because when the body can move in sync, the body can move in coherence, we become that powerful coherent vibration. We then have more energetic room. We're not, ho- we're not full of kind of toxic memories of the past. We're not being triggered every five seconds. You know, we're not holding on to like dark energy. We're actually just somebody that's just free and flowy and fun and vibrant. And you can read those people's energy in my life. And I've no doubt your listeners are thinking, fucking hell, <laughs> fucking hell, what is going on with her? And it's because I'm just feel so expanded right now. I feel like I have so much room. I have so much energy and expansion for clients and the business and the growth and all the things. And this is why I honestly believe the Becoming launch is one of my biggest launches ever. And it's because number one, people resonate with this shit. And number two, because I'm just ready to really serve people with what I have learned. And so this is why the sale has ended on the Becoming program, the official sale. But if you are that person that's like, shit, I really should have done this. This Becoming program is the steps I need. I need to move into nervous system regulation. I want the wealth. I want the worth. I want the health. 
I want to step into my power. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want the anxiety or the worry or the constant striving. I want to feel powerful, empowered and become a manifesting magnet. Then you just send me an email or a DM on Instagram with the word becoming and I will send you a unique discount code for you to unlock it at the full sale price as what it was. And I'll also send you the option, which is something that's been asked for this weekend to add on personal one-to-one coaching with me. So privately, you can't actually find it on my website, but I will send it to you if you want to have that private one-to-one coaching with me as you go through the program for that accountability, for that support. I will share that link with you as well. Just DM me or email me. The email is lucy at lucysuperfox.com or you can drop me a DM on Instagram. Loose super fox and with the word becoming. So nervous system regulation is important. It's what you're going to hear for the next, I promise you this morning in five years or good morning Britain or whatever they're called, they're going to sit there and it's going to say in five years time. So the new thing, nervous system regulation, you could be five, 10, 15 years ahead of this and somebody who's happy, who's healthy, who's wealthy, who's worthy, who stepped into their next level self because they didn't wait because they realized that this shit wasn't woo woo. This stuff was actually powerful and they had the power to change by stepping into it. They could step out of their constant need to strive, constantly to prove constantly need to be somebody for somebody else and really step into their own energy their own power and doing that through healing and dealing making that inner transformation to master manifestation so i love you all so much i hope you resonated and loved this episode as much as i love sharing it with you if you want to access that becoming program at the becoming sale price dm me the word becoming love you all so much have the most beautiful week and i'll see you on the next episode <laughs>